Welcome to our new channel. Our content will be focused on hi-fi audio, home theater audio, and personal mobile audio equipment. The goal will be to share information, knowledge, and our own experiences for you to maximize your listening enjoyment. We will accomplish this through sharing our product knowledge and we'll share our personal observations and experience with these products. At the same time, sharing tips on how to set up your equipment in your home. Some people have the benefit of setting up their system in a dedicated space such as a home theater room, while others need to or may want to integrate their system into the common living areas of their home. Regardless of your choice or situation, there has never been a more affordable time to purchase new equipment or upgrade your existing system. Our choice was to enjoy our primary music listening and home theater while in close proximity to the amenities of our home. Our primary system is installed in our family room, a space where we still wanted it to be functional, attractive in appearance, and match the style of the rest of the home. This room is very open and has plenty of challenging aspects to work around when it comes to getting the best sound reproduction. In another video, we can elaborate on why it was so important for us to integrate our two-channel and multi-channel music listening along with our home theater system in our family room. Unless you're setting up your home audio system in a dedicated room, specifically built to meet the needs for high-quality sound reproduction, there will be compromises that need to be made. Especially when your system is installed in a multi-purpose living space, where you cannot interfere with the original function of the room. Some compromises will have a greater impact on the performance of your system than others. It will be a balance between compromising for the sake of functionality and maximizing your listening enjoyment. Examples of common compromises are room shape and size, speaker placement, furniture locations, and other things like flooring or windows that also impact sound reflections. The most important thing for family harmony is to ensure the appearance is not overwhelming while the other functions of the living space remain comfortable and inviting. Sound daunting? At first it may, however, after taking the time to view and read some of the excellent sources of online information, your personal journey integrating audio into your living spaces can get off to a good start. Before we start, we have to take care of a few items first. We are enthusiasts who have always been passionate about high fidelity audio and have benefited greatly from the vast library of reputable online content during our continued quest for the best possible audio experience. Although we are not trained professionals, we have spent countless hours sifting through this information, determine what equipment to purchase and how to best set it up within the limitations of our living space. We have implemented lots of these practices and have been fortunate enough to have owned and listened to a variety of home audio components over the years. With the changes we've made to our equipment and system configuration, we've experienced significant performance improvements. Our content is produced from the perspective of a well-informed consumer to share information with each other in a positive and respectful manner. The purpose of this channel is to pass along what we've learned from our experiences and to help you improve your own system should you choose to do so. Some of the recommendations you'll find online will make very small improvements, while others can bring more significant improvements. All of the equipment mentioned in this video has been purchased by us for our enjoyment. All music tracks or clips are completely original, have been supplied to the channel, and are not infringing on any restricted usage material regulations as full and complete consent has been given. Should this type of format or content interest you, please continue watching the video and subscribing to this channel. So it's time to delve into today's video topic. This video is about upgrading our present Denon X8500H AV receiver with external application from Stark Sound with their A8350 fully balanced amplifier and what effects this has had on our current system and the results of our extensive listening sessions. Let's dig deeper into this upgrade project. This is Denon's flagship receiver introduced in 2018. 
Along with this receiver, Denon has brought out a limited edition 110th anniversary model, which is $1,500 more Canadian and a thousand more in US funds. For this video, all comments and specifications are in reference to the original flagship model X8500H. This receiver has received so many high recommendation and awards for it being the most feature loaded receiver at the time of the release and the overall exceptional performance. We certainly agree with that assessment and are extremely pleased owning such a great unit. Here are some of the specifications from Denon. It's a flagship receiver with 13 channel processing for 9.1.4 or 7.1.6 playback. 13 powerful amplifiers built in with specifications of 150 watts at 8 ohms running two channels. It has Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, DTS-Pro, IMAX Enhance, and Aura 3D decoding. Heos Home Audio with Amazon Alexa integration, HDMI 2.1 ready with upgrade at a later time, and Odyssey Multi-EQ XT32 Room Correction compatible with Multi-EQ Editor app for additional customization. We will add a link in the description to the Denon X8500H for your easy reference below. The 8500's power output is all that's needed for home theater and high resolution music reproduction anywhere in your home, including medium and some larger size dedicated theater rooms. We use the Denon in a large 22 foot by 23 foot open concept family room setting with 12 foot ceilings. The home theater is not centered in the room as there is a five foot wide walkway on one side with a two story high ceiling above. The back of the room is only partially enclosed by a fireplace, and then it opens up to a large kitchen and dining area behind. A very challenging room, to say the least. Our previous model was the 11-channel Denon X6300H receiver. The latest version is the highly praised X6700H model, which has two less channels than the 8500 H and rated by Denon at 140 watts, two channels driven at 8 ohms. It's an excellent choice for anyone that doesn't need the extra channel count and in small to medium sized rooms. Great for music and home theater. We were very pleased with the overall sound, features, the very user friendly setup screens, and so much more. In our application, it just did not have the power to fill our space. We then tried the 11 channel 2018 Marantz SR8012 receiver, hoping that with its list of improvements, including the large toroidal transformer, that this AV receiver would be just what we needed. The SR8012 was rated at 140 watts per two channels driven at 8 ohms, and the enhancements they did with Marantz was noticeable right away with higher performance and increased power. An excellent AV receiver in all aspects, however, when listening at reference level and beyond it, it was starting to distort the sound to a level I was not comfortable with. Most SR8012 owners with more manageable size rooms wouldn't need to drive this very capable receiver at such high power levels. From my understanding, the new version of this receiver, the Marantz SR8015, has been improved to rectify the same issue of clipping we were hearing. Great job, Marantz, in continuing to improve your products. More information can be found on the Audioholics website and or YouTube channel. We will add a link for the new Marantz SR8015 for easy to reference below. The Marantz SR8012 was replaced with the flagship Denon X8500H, and it was exactly what was needed. The performance of the Denon flagship is excellent and has all the power and headroom that the vast majority of end users could ever wish for. What we noticed right away was the increased dynamics of the presentation that Denon is known for. This was noticeable with music sources, but especially for home theater applications. It also proved to be quite musical in its presentation, and that pays many dividends for home theater applications as well. In our case, just for the channel can alone, the choice would still be the Denon X8500H for our application. We live in a wonderful time when manufacturers like United Sound 
have refocused their energies to achieve this level of sound reproduction in their higher level products. Kudos to you. We installed an AC Infinity T8 cooling fan on top of the Denon, and that assisted to keep the receiver within safe operational levels for heat, as it's installed in a closed audio cabinet. We would also advise all owners of receivers that can or do produce heat dependent on their environment, that they should invest in such an inexpensive product. It's a small price to pay for peace of mind and to add longevity for your equipment. We will add a link for easy reference below. The first thing to understand is most AV receiver power specifications are rated at two channels driven, which means in use. With receivers that have 11 or 13 channels of processing plus amplification, for example, when the seven channels are being used, the actual wattage to each channel is reduced. I would expect that when we're running our bottom seven channels with the 8500, that would be around 100 watts per channel as compared with the rating of 150 watts. If all channels were engaged, then there would obviously be less. As consumers, we usually have to rely on an outside party or professional reviewers with the necessary equipment to have access to that information. I believe that Denon Marantz now guarantees 70% of the two-channel power rating with five channels driven, so that's a start. The good news is most external power amplifier manufacturers now show ratings for all channels driven, and then you can be assured of their performance to be able to match your wattage requirements with your room size and your speakers. One of the reasons to consider an external amp upgrade is to reduce the load on your receiver to ensure longevity of the lifespan of the unit. All multi-channel receivers are covering off so many functions in usually confined spaces and now are required to process many more channels of internal amplified power. Truly an engineering achievement. However, audiophiles and enthusiasts have long recognized that having the power separated from the processing portion of the receiver has far more benefits and is the first step in moving to separate components for each function which is sonically superior. Another reason would be to increase wattage for power-hungry speakers with low sensitivity ratings. In our case, the paradigms are all efficient with a sensitivity ratings of 90 to 91 dB, so that was not a concern for us. The speaker sensitivity rating should be matched with enough power to adequately drive them properly. Having said that, most speakers will sound their best when more power is provided. In our case, we also wanted to move our present system configuration from a 5.2.4 to a 7.2.4, adding rear side surrounds, which we have already done, and then to a 7.2.6 by adding a third set of Atmos height speakers in the future. What we did want to do, as we have two large front towers, the Paradigm Studio Reference 100s, was to get their performance up to their full potential. We run two sets of medium-sized Studio Reference 60 towers for the rear back surrounds and for the rear side surrounds, with the Paradigm Studio Reference CC2 center channel that accounts for our current seven channel main bed layer of speakers. All the speakers we utilize are timber-matched, full-range speakers handling 150 watts to 210 watts. Our center channel is angled towards our main listening position with the ISO Acoustics Aparta Series Adjustable Aluminum Sound Dampening Speaker Stands. They also have more affordable stands made of a different material that work very well. We are very pleased with our ISO acoustic speaker stands and use the entry level set in another room for small studio monitors. We will add a link for easy reference below. Another advantage of having external power amps is that the unused channels in your AV receiver can also be used for additional speakers such as front wide and the top Atmos layer. They also can be used for multi-zone application of other systems in your home. So don't be too concerned with those extra unused AV receiver channels as they have future expansion capabilities and uses. Our initial criteria was to increase the power to the front two or three channels to a minimum of 200 watts per channel 
at 8 ohms, as the majority of content is directed to the front left, front right, and center channels in most source material. If on a limited budget, these are the most important channels to receive a power upgrade. Our search started with the 2 and 3 channel amps. It soon became apparent that to get our current 7 channel bed layer of speakers to that level, we may need to add more than one amp, such as a 5 channel coupled with a 2 channel amp from the same manufacturer. An example was the Anthem MCA525 and MCA225 running side by side. Well, that proved to be a very expensive option, and we quickly realized the sweet spot for value was in the 7 to 8 multi-channel amplifier category. So we changed our search criteria. We considered 7 and 8 channel amps from Monolith, Emotiva, ATI, Outlaw Audio, to name a few. By a random search, a company I had not heard of before, Stark Sound in California, came up. I went to their amplifier section that listed four available products. Only two was of interest to us, the AD4-320, a four-channel Class D, and the A8-350 eight-channel amplifier. As we prefer Class A type application, and after reading the information posted on their site, the A8 was the one that would fit the criteria perfectly. They had just started to offer their own direct-to-consumer sales website option to purchase. We also felt assured that there was no risk in trying the Star Camp, as they offer a 30-day free trial period for the United States, and that actually includes Canada. Not many vendors are that confident in their products. They also offered free shipping to both countries, and considering the weight of a well-built power amp, that was an important factor as well. That saved at least $150 US dollars to our location in Canada. After careful consideration and comparing specifications and costs, including the US exchange rate, custom fees, we chose the Stark A8350 with 8 channels of amplification. This amp met and surpassed all of our criteria and was on sale at the time, discounting the 5200 US regular price. They arranged the complete delivery service, including the customs paperwork. It arrived in perfect condition from California through customs to our home in Canada in five business days. Truly excellent customer service experience. That was a great start. After initial setup, including the purchase of one more AC Infinity TA cooler fan, as again the Star Camp was installed in an audio cabinet with limited ventilation, it immediately became apparent and confirmed that our choice to go with a separate power amplifier was our right choice. The Stark A8350 truly changed everything when it came to home theater and listening to two-channel and multi-channel high-res music sources. More on that later. The features and specifications on this particular amplifier are truly impressive. Here they are, as noted by Stark Sound. Linear Class A application and fully balanced amplification circuits, 8 channels, 350 watts at 4 ohms, all channels driven, and 200 watts per channel at 8 ohms, all channels driven. Thanks Stark Sound for being one of the manufacturers that do share this information. It also has unique Class A and AB seamless switching technology. It is also fully balanced input and output. For those that wish more detail, you can now view and pause the technical specification sheet from Stark Sound. As you will note from this picture, you can see the size difference of the Stark A8350 over the flagship Denon 8500. It's taller, longer, and heavier, so please keep that in mind. When I inquired with Stark Sound for more information on the A8, the following was provided by Chief Technical Officer Dan Wigan. His comments were, It's a fully discreet, balanced, and self-biasing system with a very high Class A, AB bias stage. Most amps are not fully balanced all the way through. The A8 is. This provides very high signal-to-noise ratio and ensures what little total harmonic distortion is present is predominantly even order. We also run a very high bias current so that the first 30 watts of operation are in pure class A. Even with very loud music, crest factor means most of your music is probably down in the less than 10 watt range. This means almost everything you hear at really high levels 
and definitely at more moderate levels, is in pure Class A reproduction. We build most of it in-house. Obviously, we outsource the PCB fabrication, but we stuff all the boards ourselves. Likewise, we outsource some of the painting and plating processes, but most of the parts are constructed in-house. We really strive to do as much in-house as is possible for all our products, as we feel this gives us complete control and guarantees everything, such as speakers, amps, subs, and accessories, so they meet our standards at every step of the way. We would like to thank Stark Sound for their response. What I found of particular interest is the history of this relatively new startup high-end audio company that was created to build their own speaker designs from the ground up, including most of the components that make up the final product. Their plan was to be a speaker and subwoofer company. However, they found themselves not completely satisfied with the performance of high-end power amplifiers that they needed for testing, demos, and industry hi-fi shows. To ensure their speaker products could be heard as they wanted them to be, they started developing a line of external power amplifiers. They even have an impressive Stark Sound home theater room available for demonstration and listening sessions in their Gardenia, California facility, according to their website and other publications. Obviously, in COVID times, this may be restricted for the time being. However, all it takes is a phone call or email to inquire. Time for the unboxing. As you can see, the box arrived undamaged. Stark takes great care to pack the A8 with custom foam inserts to hold the receiver tightly in the first cardboard box. They then double box it, which is the only way to ship valuable audio equipment. Included in the box is a three-year warranty card from Stark Sound, two sets of cotton white gloves, assumedly to avoid fingerprints and other possible marks left on the amp during installation, which is a nice addition by the way, and the robust power cord. As you can see, when my son and I were first picking up the amp to take it out of the box, this amp is heavy, 74.9 pounds. The total shipping weight was 82.6 pounds. The amp itself is protected by a well-wrapped protective cover. When the amp is uncovered, you can see the initial beauty and excellent finish on the unit. The front has a strong appearance, highlighted by a metallic silver banding that runs the full width along the bottom of the unit. On the right of the strip is the Stark logo, which is nicely engraved. The single circular button in the middle is the power on and off switch that you would use if you are setting up the amp with a trigger to your AV receiver. There is an attractive, 3-inch tall, rectangular, LED light indicator in the center of the amp that displays the dim red when the amp is in standby mode and changes to green when the power is on. There's an abundance of ventilation holes in a chevron pattern on both sides of the amp. There are also two strips of ventilation holes on the top of the amp that run from the front to the back of, on each side. There are large heat sinks and two cooling fans on each side as well. The metal panel on the top also has an A8 stamped in the center, which adds to the extremely attractive and eye-catching design. The rear of the amplifier has a row of eight RCA gold-plated inputs, single-ended with beryllium copper, with toggle switches above each channel to switch between balanced and unbalanced connection options. Just below that are eight gold-plated XLR balance connections with a push-lock hold feature ensuring your cables stay connected. On the bottom row, there are 16 custom-made beryllium copper speaker binding posts that accept banana plugs and spade lugs. You can use them with a second set of bare wire for by wiring purposes, or for those that choose to attach your speakers with bare wire. Highly functional and attractive speaker binding posts, that's for sure. The amp is outfitted with the usual trigger input, but it also has a trigger output should you wish to daisy chain other equipment upon startup of the receiver. Below that, there is a large red power switch that you will only have to turn on once should you use the convenient trigger capability that's provided. Lastly, there is a plug-in for the supplied AC power cord. Overall, the build quality is excellent and surpasses all of our expectations. we decided there was never a better time to upgrade the look and quality of our connections. Here's a picture of what the wiring mess looked like before. 
The next images will show the installation of the Monoprice Onyx RCA shielded cables that we use for the connections between the receiver and the Stark amp. Also the cabling between our Blue Sound Node 2i and our Denon DVM 4800 5-disc CD player back to the receiver. Two more were used to connect our two Paradigm PW2200 subwoofers to the receiver. We also purchased enough Seawell direct strike banana plugs for all connections, including speakers. We use black mesh cable covers to place over the top of the bare speaker wiring that was visible and use black and red heat shrink tubing on the ends of the connections to finish them off nicely where needed. Yes, it took a lot of time. However, it was worth all the effort and low cost. Much easier to make changes and adjustments at the same time, plus the connections are held securely in place. For this particular bottom layer power upgrade, we have installed the A8350. However, possibly in future episodes, we will get to the point where we can upgrade all the other channels with another A8350 or two of their four channel class D amplifier, the AD4 320, should we decide to go the separate processor route. At the point of making this video, we had the Stark A8350 installed in our system for over five months now. Upgrading our system with this one single component has been the most significant performance improvement that we've accomplished to date and that I have heard. Regardless of the content that was played, the change in system performance was evident right from the initial startup. When we replaced our Denon X6300H with the Marantz SR8012, and ultimately the Denon X8500H, we could hear the improvements in the ability to fill our space with clean, undistorted audio. When the Marantz was installed, I was reminded of the warm, musical sound signature that I enjoyed decades ago with my past Marantz separates, but the increased dynamics and punch of the Denon 8500H was favored, especially when it came to home theater and some more demanding music genres, such as electronic. This is exactly the point where the Stark just nailed it and saved the day. We were able to have that sweet, warm musicality associated with the Marantz, while also having that fast, detailed, dynamic range and impact of the Denon, due to the Stark 8 channel amp providing Class A power up to 30 watts and then into Class AB when required. Every piece of audio source equipment we employ is influenced and benefited by the sonic superiority of the Class A topography of application. It is always present and always noticeable as everything is now operating on a much higher playing field. That refined Class A presence is like taking off a thin veil over the whole audio spectrum. This, for my ears, makes lower volume listening more enjoyable, as I can still hear the details at lower volume levels. Prior to having 200 watts of power driving the bottom bed layer of Paradigm speakers, I always felt so much was missing from my real life experience of playing music live when younger. Now there's a more detailed presentation, the bass is tighter and stronger, the mid-range and treble are well-defined, and instruments sound as they really do in person. With abundant power and headroom, the mids and highs also receive the power they need to excel on their own versus the bass drivers demanding more of the power from the receiver or amplifier. We broke in the Stark amp playing multi-channel music during the day for three weeks. When we started to do any real critical listening, we disconnected our two paradigm subwoofers. We listened to two-channel, multi-channel music from various sources, and through title masters on the Blue Sound Node 2i playing tracks rendered in MQA and without MQA. Regular TV watching, Netflix, Apple TV, Blu-rays, and HD Ultra 4K Blu-rays through our Panasonic DP-UB 820 4K Ultra HD player on our 75-inch Sony 900F 4K television. We tested the overall system with the Aura 3D Demonstration Disc Volume 2 that encompasses 27 of the very best Aura 3D recordings in various genres of music and previews of seven movies rendered in Aura 3D. 
They even tossed in one video game preview. They also did a feature presentation of the evolution of sound reproduction that is informative and very impressive in showing the three layers of sound their technologies can deliver. One of the best ways to know whether a change is an improvement is to go back to your original setup one more time. After several months of casual and more critical listening, we powered down the Stark Amp and swapped the bottom bed layer of Paradigm speakers from the Stark Amp to the Denon. Just before making the change, we listened to some of our favorite songs and portions of the Aura 3D demo disc at the same dB level. The difference was immediate and sobering. You get so used to your new upgraded system performing in certain ways, you can forget how far the sound has come as this just becomes your new normal. With the speakers only powered by the Denon 8500, this is when we really noticed the depth of the changes. Our former normal badly needed increased amplification for the Denon processing to shine as it should, and so did the Paradigm speakers to achieve their overall best performance. Our large front Paradigm Studio Reference 100s that just came to life with the Stark Power now seemed anemic with a flatter response in comparison. With two-channel music, there was no comparison with what the speakers sounded like under the Stark sound amplification, whether at lower volume levels or at reference levels. With the Paradigm Studio Reference 60s, rear side surround towers and rear back surround towers, it was noticeably more laid back, flatter with less detail and dynamics, and generally the sonic performance all the way around from the highs, mids to lows were just not what the Stark A8 provided in spades. A definite reduction in immersive effectiveness as well. We would recommend that if you're investing in external amplification, you should do all your main bed layer speakers if you can. Our present Atmos layer consists of two sets of Paradigm ADP 450s dipole speakers. Without the Stark installed, the Atmos layer collapsed and was far less pronounced whether listening to multi-channel music or home theater. When the Stark Amp powered the entire bottom layer of speakers, that freed up the Denon 8500 to only have to power the top four channels. This only makes us more eager to install our third set of ADP 450 speakers in the near future. Without the Stark Amp installed, the system sounded more compressed, the soundstage was not as evident, Imaging seemed to disappear and be less pinpointed when it should be, less musicality, and nowhere near the dynamics. The center channel dialogue was not as clear and precise, so we had to adjust it up to dB. We left our system this way for over a week, and then reconnected the Stark A8. This exercise really did allow us to recognize and appreciate the void the Stark filled. After another week, we reconnected the two Paradigm subwoofers, and ended up having to dial them back when trying to balance them with the new system. The Class A amplification translates to improved sonic performance of all music, and possibly even more for movies and home theater. We have noticed such an improvement even when watching Netflix type of material. So many series and movies have improved audio sound, now with great background music and immersive effects. When it comes to home theater, clean, clear, undistorted audio at reference levels do not sound louder. It sounds more refined and disciplined, but it is instantly ready for whatever action moments that any movie can throw at you. When it does, you will feel it, not just hear it. When we tested past reference levels, there was abundant headroom with apparent ease. That means we've achieved our goal for having more than enough power for our very challenging space. We will never need an upgrade of this exceptional 8-channel amplifier. Also, we are so pleased to be able to find the right amplifier for us in Class A. The Stark A8350 is pleasingly neutral and will bring the best out of any AV receivers or separate processors. This addition took our system to a new level in high fidelity that we've not experienced before. The end result is we feel we still retain the best that the Marantz could offer musically with the best that the Denon can offer for home theater, but on steroids. We now have the best of both worlds. Thank you for watching our first video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to our channel, 
sharing with others, and hitting the like button so that more home audio enthusiasts can participate in what this channel will have to offer. Until the next time.